Erica Henry, and as Randall introduced me, yes, I'm the owner and chiropractor of Elite Chiropractic located right here in Sandy Springs. So as in my introduction, I was telling you a little bit about pastoral abnormalities that happen during the work day, um, whether it be you're leaning over your iPad, doing lots of computer work, or what have you, I thought this would be a good topic to give you some tips to go back to the office so that you can hopefully maintain that good posture. I see everybody kind of sitting up straight, good. Um, so that it keeps you out of my office, so you guys are, you know, feeling better. So ergonomics is the study of the workplace and how you sit and maintain your posture. That is important because poor posture leads to illness, sickness, and disease processes, which can eventually keep you out of work, which none of us want to do, right? So most commonly in my office, as I was talking about earlier, I see this forward head posture, these rounded shoulders, and a lot of people that come in are complaining of headaches, neck pain, back pain, and carpal tunnel-like issues. So what are ways that you can address that? Included in your little handouts is just a reminder of how to sit at your desk. Make sure that your feet are flat on the floor. Lots of times people raise their chair or lower it so your legs aren't 90 degrees to the floor. That can create some extra strain in your low back. Keeping your hips just slightly higher than your knees. And then keeping your seat as far back in the chair as possible. So not sitting on the edge of your seat, kind of maintaining that buttock to the far back of your chair appropriately. It should be level with your eyes. You shouldn't be having to look down or look up. So that also reduces that eye strain. Throughout that day, if you have eye strain, what happens is your head tends to go like that. Did you guys see that? That forward head posture. And over time, that leads people to my office because it puts extra tension on your nerves and your upper cervical spine, lower cervical spine, and it also gives you that sensation of the numbness tingling in your hand, the carpal tunnel symptoms. Um, lifting. This is a popular topic. Most of us know to lift with our legs and things like that, but some tips that I put on there as well is plan ahead. Make sure you're not lifting a huge box full of feathers or a huge box full of books because that's going to prepare you differently. If you think that you're going to be lifting books and it's a feathers, you're going to be going, whoa, you know, or just the opposite if it's a really heavy box. So plan ahead. Make sure you bend at your knees. Keep your core nice and tight, kind of like you just got punched or you're bracing yourself for that punch. That's going to strengthen your whole back muscles and maintain that posture throughout that lifting. Also, lift close to your body. Don't be, you know, holding something way off here. Make sure it's really close to you. Again, lift with your legs and make sure you ask for help. We're not Hulk. We don't need to act like Hulk in the workplace especially. So make sure you ask for help if it's something that you can't do. Another one I like to talk about is footwear. We all know that we have to usually maintain our attire based on our, you know, uh, requirements of our business. And loose clothing, loose fitting is always great. Maintains, you know, good skin contact. Make sure that you don't get any yeast infections and different skin disorders, irritations, things like that. But footwear is something that we often don't talk about. Not to wear excessively high heels. People give me a hard time because I wear heels, but it's okay. I try to keep them a little low. Um, avoid slippery treads. Not be slipping around. You know, there's lots of treads that have um, rubber type material on the bottom or some other variations of materials that really help prevent you from slipping. Avoid a narrow toe and those shoes that lack an arch or toe support. Better choices of footwear. Ergonomically correct shoes address five basic principles. They properly distribute your body weight throughout your entire foot so that you're not getting plantar fasciitis symptoms. They improve your posture and spinal alignment because that actually starts in your foot. Your spinal alignment goes from your foot, ankle, knee, hip, all the way up. So if you're wearing some crazy shoes, you're going to have this altered posture. They help to improve your balance and actually relieve back pain. So if you guys are having some back pain, go, you know, some of these new insult that you can even get at uh, Bath & Body Works, or not Bath & Body Works, excuse me, Bed Bath & Beyond. They have the, I can't think of the company now, but where you can stand on the little booth, that's better than nothing. Don't, you don't necessarily need to rush right out and buy, you know, $1,000 insoles. 
try an example like that, I think they're $50. If they help, great. If not, maybe then talk to your podiatrist or get a little bit better. Happy feet after work is important too. When you get out home, make sure you kick off those feet and relax. Um, some great ideas is a negative heel shoe. Is anybody familiar with that? So that's kind of like earth brand shoes, if you have heard of those. The heel actually sits slightly lower than the rest of your footbed, so it takes that pressure off of the low back. It increases that arch, so it helps relax your foot throughout the afternoon and evening. Also, rocker bottom shoes. Um, I, MBT was the first brand to come out, but I think even Skechers and some of these lower priced varieties have some of those, so they kind of rock. The bottom of them are shaped like a rocker and it helps reduce the pressure of your foot and like I said all the way up through your postural alignment and it also improves the function of your spine and then finally women if you like to wear flip-flops a good brand is called fit flops um, they have a midsole that really has a great cushion the ball of the foot is cushioned and it helps stimulate muscle tone so we can get a workout while we're walking around doing our grocery shopping what have you in those fit flops how many of us snapped on the job okay. yeah and if you're not you should be because that's going to help prevent overeating later in the day be sure to make to make sure that your snacks are around 150 calories they should include vitamins fiber and lots of protein also, step away from your desk while you're eating. If you like to eat lunch in the office, go to another room or stand so you can at least burn some extra calories. We do so much mindless eating, especially during the workday. So making sure you're stepping away from the desk, engaging in conversations, you know, going out networking, what have you during that lunch hour helps ensure that you're not gonna overeat. Avoid the white sugars and processed snacks. So some great um, ideas is raw almonds, some hummus with some vegetables, a hard boiled egg, salsa, and some whole grain tortilla chips. Things like that are great choices for the workplace. And then finally, office exercise. How can we burn calories while we're at work? First, make the most of your commute. Make sure you're biking. Lots of us work close enough where we can either bike or walk to work. Park if you're not that close. Park farther away in the parking lot so you can get a little bit of exercise. Take the stairs rather than the elevator. And if you ride the bus, get off a few blocks earlier and then walk to work. Um, again, I talked about standing versus sitting. When you're on the phone call, stand. Walk around your office. You know, just getting up and staying mo moving helps prevent these blood flow, blood flow problems that lead to pain and posture problems later down the road. Upgrading your chair. Have any of you seen um, stability balls or some of these office chairs that have like a stability ball in the center? These are great options. Not only are they focusing on your core, but they're keeping your body and your posture in line. And you really become more aware while you're sitting in your work or in your yeah, workspace where your body is in alignment with the rest of your uh, desks in your um, office. Resistance bands. Those are so easy to just throw in your desk. Wrap them underneath your chair, do a few, you know, arm curls or some leg work while you're just sitting in your chair. So easy. And then finally, take fitness breaks. Go on a walk throughout the day. Do some gentle stretching while you're sitting at the desk. Make sure that you um, bring your chin down to your chest and get that neck really stretched, especially if you do a lot of work on the computer. Great option. And I'm going to go through an exercise, but I don't want to do it on camera. Um, a stretch that all of us can do. So if you have any other questions about this type of topic or any other topics, you can visit me on the website at www.elitechiropracticllc.com or on the phone at 678-517-0240. Thank you.